Hello viewers, on Gran Turismo 7 we finally return to St. Croix C. It seems as though Polyphony had forgotten about this whole location and this exact configuration. It's a great track, so we're going to jump in here, hopefully have some good races. I haven't qualified in this first race, so I'm probably going to be off the pace because there's lots of very quick players in here. So if I finish anywhere above 15th, I think I've done a good job, but let's jump straight in. So yes, guys, the long-awaited return of St. Croix C. This track has not been used in a very long time. In fact, I can't remember the last time it was used on this game. It's been well over a year, at least in daily races. Now, initially, as we just zoomed in there, you see the Spaniard gets a very slow start. And heading into the first big braking zone, you see here definitely misses his uh, braking marker point and slams into the back of Sparks Theory. Now, moving forward from the back of the pack on this circuit is actually not the hardest given that the track is so long, has many straights and lots of overtaking opportunities. One of the reasons why I love this track so much, it has a great flow to it and it is a very curiously long track as well. Three and a half minutes for a lap. As we move up into 11th place here, capitalising on all of that chaos up in front albeit with a big gap to the cars in front, which is not good around here. You need slipstream, ideally, there's so many straights. I thought this Hungarian driver would tow me back to the group, given that he's one of the fastest in the world. But I wasn't one of the fastest in the world, therefore he kind of dropped me quite quickly, as you can see, and made some progress without me. On lap number two, I got overtaken by um, flow riding before pulling into the pit lane you do have to swap tires on this uh, race actually you, know, you don't have to swap tires you have to pit you don't have to swap tires but it is probably the better thing to do with such a long lap with long fast flowing corners you do need that tire life ideally so this is the end of lap three start of four so pretty much everyone pits at the end of two or three and then my dutch rival there pitting at the end of three instead as i fall into 11th position trying to catch up here with the Hungarian driver up in front and only doing so towards the end of the lap actually are catching up here with the Portuguese driver in the very nice Castrol Tom's liveried Supra the Supra being the go-to car of this week for this race there are some other options the BMW seems quite strong the Genesis also seems good but as ever, we have a meta car. As we look up the inside, trying to throw him off the line and it actually does kind of distract him slightly as we now get the far superior exit speed and move up into 10th. So that is a couple of positions higher than I started and not too bad for my first race without any practice. Okay, move forward. I was only a few seconds away from that battle for fifth there is some potential here for a much better result i do need to qualify better though and that's exactly what i'm going to do here top times in the world are high 21s but if you want to start getting into the top let's say 250 in the world you need to get into the three minute 24s so yes a very long lap here but it's a good lap it's a fast flowing and interesting lap in group three or above i would say uh, I was hoping that this might be a Group 1 race, but Group 3 is still good fun. Into the first big braking zone, braking about 125 metres before the corner. Now, I set an initial lap here, a 325.5, which is not too bad for a first lap qualifying. We now have the Ghost to try to improve upon. I was level with the Ghost for the majority of the lap, actually, until the final corner, getting a slightly better exit. That final turn is very awkward and quite hard to get right. Improving to a 325.2. And then it's this final sector where I actually struggle quite a lot. Lots of long, awkward corners with not the best sight lines and not the best braking references. And so it's quite a tricky sector to get dead right. And, you know, it comes at the end of the lap, of course. And so you've got the pressure of trying to bring home a lap through this difficult final sector. Once again, Keeping up with the ghost, the ghost is set to begin the lap half a second ahead. So if I catch up with it completely, then I beat the lap by half a second, which I nearly do here as we cross the line. That's going to be 324. So I'm no, I know that I'm in a good sort of area here. 
but absolutely could go quicker than this. This is pretty much the second big braking zone on the lap. And on that lap, you see the ghost lap, the 324.8, making a big mistake on the exit of that corner. So I knew there was room for improvement. On this lap here, though, um, this is a slight bit later, lap number five. They're just going a little bit wide on the exit and just losing control of the car. And this is the difficulty of this track. The beauty of it as well is such a long lap with many corners, very technical. It's therefore quite, quite hard to string together an entire lap. I was quite quick through that sector. So as you can see, I was good in some areas, bad in others. But the optimal lap time there, slowly decreasing, 324.1 possible if I were to string together all of my fastest sectors into one lap. At the end of my sixth lap of qualifying, getting down to a 324.3 or 2 effectively. But this is my fastest lap. Let's take a look on board then. I'm trying to beat the ghost which is always a good reference to have, I, th I think, especially on a lap like this. Braking again, 125 metres before the corner, off the brake, let the car flow through the corner, back on the power, really trying to get a good exit. And there's lots of long straights here, so the exit speed is so, so important. Again, braking about 125 metres before this one, being really patient here, the wall comes quite close on the exit. And then this middle sector here is really all about carrying a lot of speed through the corners and maximising the track width as much as possible. Very wide track here with lots of kerb on the inside and the outside as well. And using all of that is crucial to getting the absolute maximum out of your lap time. This corner coming up, braking pretty much on the 150, sorry, on the 100 boards, getting the car into the apex. Actually getting onto the power a little bit too late there, could have been on there a tad sooner. Another left-hander, again onto the power, maximising the track width as much as possible. And you've got this right-hander into quite an awkward left with an awkward kerb on the inside. It's not one of the kerbs you really want to take too much of, or at least you don't want to go over it. And then this downhill chicane, very, very tricky to get dead right, carrying a lot of speed into this right. Slight lift, a bit more of a lift through the left to prepare the angle for the right-hander. Awkward bumps midway through that, which can really throw off the car keeping it nicely poised I actually lose a bit of time to the ghost as you can see breaking on those triangles as we head into this left hander at the end of the bridge and this right hander one of the most difficult on the lap I'd say but um, one of the most important given that it leads out onto the longest straight on the lap getting on the power nicely there shifting up in this Supra a little bit before the red line or a little bit before the end of the rev gauge I think I'm probably shifting a bit too late if anything at the end of the straight, this awkward right-hander, breaking on the 150 for that. And then this is the final sector. This is so difficult to get uh, dead right. This right-hander is really about being brave on entry and carrying and committing speed on the way in. You can even run a bit of grass on the exit if you need to. Then a couple of corners here. This one's quite, quite tricky. It kind of feigns you into turning in a bit too late, but you can really turn in quite early and carry the speed through. Just two corners remaining then. Breaking on the 100 board. This was actually way too deep. Uh, a long, long way from the apex. In fact, it was so far away I couldn't really see it from that kind of distance. Final corner then. Carrying a good amount of speed. Running a bit wide. Not the best line, but it is going to be quicker. And as we approach the finish, it's going to be a 324.0. That's good enough for 130th in the world. Okay, guys. Race number two. Eighth on the grid. So that time was good. But once again, this is basically top split. We've got a load of the top 10 players in here. I think Killian was in here, former world champion. And once again, I think finishing above where I start will be an absolute mission. But with hopefully a bit more consistency here, let's see what we can do. So I think one of the signs of a good daily race is that you have a lot of top players playing. On this daily race, it is absolutely certain that there are some great players in here jack balding and tony sk at the front there we also have nicholas romero in a genesis towards the back he finished on the podium in this year's manufacturers cup at the gran turismo world finals and we also have killian in the lobby as well and he is a previous nations cup world champion so we have some very good players in here in towards the first major corner 
And it looks like Sparks went for a move but kind of had to back out very late. And as a result, dropping back quite a lot. Now I kind of saw that, I thought, well the main priority for me now is to just remain in the slipstream of this very talented group of drivers up in front. Only two seconds away from the lead at this point. I really just want to minimise time loss and just stick with this group. As you can see, there's a gap to that group behind. And ideally, I want to keep it that way. If I have any ambition of finishing at least in eighth place, this is always the difficult thing in these kinds of lobbies. You have all these top players, of course, towards the front, but then you have a couple of them not qualifying and starting towards the back and seeing how far up the order they can move. And you're always under threat from that kind of player even in a race like this where there's so many good players they have to overtake lots of players that, that doesn't really stop them from getting through from the back to let's say a top five so here still in eighth not really attacking just yet being nice and patient it's a five lap race on a lap that takes three and a half minutes so the race total time just shy of 20 minutes maybe 18 i think it's 17 and a half something like that coming down the hill towards the bridge difficult section of the track this this is where this is the sort of the business end of the lap i would say where the overtakes begin to happen and one is about to happen here the french driver getting a poor exit which is so easy to do on that right hander onto the bridge but i decided not to go for the move here it's a good overtaking opportunity this left hander but we are about to head towards the longest straight on the track and therefore oftentimes it's best to kind of remain behind and take the slipstream option which we are going to do here you see the top group there just beginning to edge clear jack balding in the lead very very quick player uh, these days and he's uh, beginning to make a breakaway at the front and you see here a bit of teamwork with the driver behind who decides you know what let's slipstream together and try to catch back up with the group in front and you need a bit of that here as the group for second has an almighty battle well we're going to have an almighty battle as well as the driver behind goes for the big lunge and I managed to pull off a double switcheroo there with David Croft going absolutely wild as ever in the commentary box into the final sector it's now my responsibility to try to, try to catch up with this group but that's Killian that's Killian into the wall I think he went into the back of the car in front and just lost control of the car and there's this guy therefore going very slowly now up into fifth place i've gone from eighth to fifth and this is not an easy lobby this uh, this is full of very good players and so this is not going to be easy to maintain this sort of position from here going forward um the hungarian driver here quite determined to preserve his position seems as though he's got damage or dirty tires one of the two seems to be quite off the pace at this moment all i can do really is just try to follow him through sit in the slipstream but now, with that movement to the left, back to the right, it's kind of opened up the door to the French player to go around the outside through turn one, flat out through turn one, as we look for our breaking point into turn two. And he's got the inside line. There's not much I could do here. I've, I'm scared of getting pinned against the wall, so I kind of back out there and have to settle into sixth place. Too much battling here, and we're in danger of losing the slipstream of the Hungarian driver. And that's always something you can rely upon some faster driver from the front falls back into your path you can just kind of tuck into their slipstream up the inside though and unfortunately Nicholas Romero there in the Genesis gonna misjudge that one completely late on the brakes way too late on the brakes and I'm way back down in ninth now next to Consta another very quick player going from the back of the pack hopefully towards the front and so we're gonna have to tuck in here into ninth place that was a bit of a disaster for me a couple of positions lost a couple of seconds lost as well and in a lobby of this kind of quality, you can't really afford to be losing a couple of seconds and a couple of positions in one go. That can be very, very difficult to recover. But we're going to do our best once again. As I just mentioned, we're behind a top player now, so we can try to rely on Consta here to try to drag us back towards that group in front. But this isn't one of my strongest sectors, this bit here. About to watch me make a couple of minor errors. And, you know, normally this is quite a small error, just... Dipping the two wheels over that curb just unsettles the car, unsettles the car on the exit as well. And that just surrenders a couple of tenths as the cars in front begin to just pull away. And in this kind of lobby, you do, you do pretty much have to be bang on perfect all the time. Otherwise, you are going to be dropped. 
that's exactly what's happening here. Thankfully, I did have a, uh, a bit of a, a gap to the group behind as the, the group in front starts battling as uh, the race kind of formed into a couple of clusters here as the cars get drawn to each other with this seeming magnetic force of slipstream. I'm 1.6 in front of 10th place. So I'm one position down on where I started, which isn't ideal, but that was really down to that one moment which really surrendered it all. I could have easily been in that group just up in front, if not for that. This final sector here is really all about just trying to catch back up with the group, trying to get back into slipstream range and giving myself half a chance of just sticking with the group. Through the final corner, lap number two, top three go into the pit lane. So most people going in, I'd say at the end of lap number two, um, to get the get the undercut changing over to a fresh set of soft tires boys in the toyota pit garage they're doing a fantastic job as ever as we pull away here in 12th position so this is always going to be an important lap in the race the one where you've just gone for the undercut on everyone else a couple of cars did not pit on that lap now it's quite important here that i stick into the slip, uh, slipstream with the car in front and as you can see the Belgian who I started the race behind just makes a slight mistake there and it just brings me back into a good range three tenths of a second behind now this lap it needs to be a quick one ideally I mean ideally every lap needs to be a quick one if if you know your stuff about racing you'd know that's the case but especially so this out lap when we're trying to undercut some other drivers and so I do want to stick quite close to this guy but I don't really want to fight him too much because yes okay I could gain this one position but then I would possibly lose a lot of time to the others who have not yet pitted so this is quite a delicate moment in a race where do I just pressure him a lot and cause him to make a mistake or you know how exactly do you play this well fortunately enough for me it didn't really matter in the end because coming through here this is a problematic corner exit and as you can see continues turning left when the when the when the track straightened up and we have a nice little visit to the French Barrier at the exit of that corner. It is a very uh, awkward corner and there are a couple of these corners here which have those sort of raised curbs and if you just drop your wheels over the top of those curbs and it could possibly be game over for you just like it was there. So now I have Nicholas Romero bearing down upon me two laps to go gap 2.2 seconds and you, you might think, well, that's a second a lap, should be fine. But no, this is a very long lap, three and a half minutes. That is the kind of gap that can be whittled down in a matter of, let's say, even one lap. And so, here, back in eighth place, I'm in the position I started with a one second margin to the Frenchman in front on home turf and with Nicolas Romero in the Genesis bearing down upon me. So this is not going to be an easy race. It's um, That's not going to help either, going a little bit wide there. Kind of ruining the fact that we had that incident on lap number two, which would probably put me... I reckon I'll probably be in that fight for sixth place right now, a couple of seconds up the road, if not for that. But hey-ho, it's happened. I can't really do anything about it now. Other than try to get back onto terms here with Ilan Yaya, who has just gone a little bit wide on that awkward right-hander. It's got an awkward braking zone as you're kind of braking on the turn and therefore it's quite easy to run wide, which is exactly what he did. So trying to carry the speed here through this middle sector. Lots of long 90 degree corners as we come round to this a very difficult left-hander again with this curb. You've got to really watch out for it. You kind of want to touch it but not go over it too much as we then head down, uh, downhill into this fast sweeping chicane to the right, then lift off onto the left. And then this one's all about getting a good angle here on the exit as we get a good run out in third gear. Now could easily have gone to the left-hand side there to go for the overtake, but as we've mentioned previously in the video, you kind of want to wait for that long straight. Uh, Romero behind, gap down to 1.1, and so, the gap has come down by one second so far on this lap and we are only about two thirds of the way through it. Now it's all about the exit here. This is one of my weaker corners I would say on this lap. 
this is really difficult to judge the speed that you can carry through and then when you need to get on the power without hitting the wall on the outside. But this is a good kind of range to be at. The slipstream range here, um, you kind of want to be starting this straight maybe a couple of tenths behind, three or four tenths, and then you just build up this momentum to pull out to the inside, look for your braking marker board, the 150, the second board, and boom, we're up the inside, controlling the corner, preventing the old switcheroo, and that is seventh place taken with 1.2 laps remaining. This could be quite tricky to keep this position, but it's been a great race so far, albeit with a couple of incidents here and there, but doing my best to hold on in a very high strength of field kind of race. And as you can see, Romero going for the move there, and that just cost them a bit of time, as now they drop out of slipstream range, albeit temporarily, as now Romero moves up, at least, well, temporarily only, into ninth. That is good for me, they are battling quite hard, and this is my time to try to just pull away as much as possible. And there it is, confirmation that Nicholas has moved up into eighth. This is now going to be a very difficult lap to try to keep him behind. One more lap remaining. Can we do it? Can we finish in seventh, one position higher than when I started? We'll be at 15 seconds off the lead. Breaking into this one, and you know what? I feel quite accomplished through here. This corner feels quite nice. There's, I would say, the corners towards the end of the lap onto the back straight and in the final sector which are the ones I probably need to work upon and if I did that I think I can get a top 100 time in the world with a bit more work I would say my pace here has been good it's been very satisfactory not too bad at all um, to be having a battle with this kind of competition is always nice it's always a good thing and that's why I think this kind of race it's always good to see it St. Croix C, for those who remember back in the day, on GT Sport, when they changed the daily races, which were actually daily, they changed every day back in the day, they changed it to weekly, I think it was midway through 2018 or 2017, St. Croix C in Group 3 was the first weekly race, and it was actually a very good race back then, I, I deeply remember the, the races we had um, back then. And this one is very much following along the same lines. A very good battle throughout the field. Here in 7th place towards the bridge. And the gap has come down to 0.2 seconds. You can see uh, Romero in the Genesis behind once again. Obviously after the incident on, on lap number 2. He, um, he was in the wall. And therefore had quite a lot of time to recover. And has done so very quickly. This time, let's hope for a cleaner altercation between us. Or well, ideally, I can just pull away, but that's not likely to happen. Coming up to the long straight, getting a good exit here. Bit of a wobble through the corner, and that is quite a common feature here around this circuit. Being a street circuit, of course, fair amount of bumps and awkwardness with some of the turns. Now here, getting on the power a little bit too early, just raising the wall, and I think Romero went into the ball slightly. And he's going to be three and a half tenths behind. But this is kind of a good range, as we just spoke about on the previous lap. As I move over to the inside, I definitely want to cover. As we only have one sector of racing remaining. We're going to cover fully to the right-hand side. And as he moves left, we're going to cover left as well. And he's going to force a move on the outside of this hairpin turn. And it's a really good battle between the two of us. He's got a good uh, run on the exit, on the outside, and he's managed to do it. And that is so annoying, as there's not many corners left at which I can re-attack him and get this position back. So we're gonna take a look here, is it possible? I mean, these corners have quite a wide entry and therefore it, it is possible to sneak up the inside on some of them. Not quite close enough here, a bit of oversteer. We're gonna cover the inside. We're now under threat from the Frenchman behind for eighth place. And it looks like seventh place is dropping away as we then head towards the final corner again having to cover the inside slightly not the best run through here compromise the exit as it's going to be a drag race to the line between myself and the other supra romero is slowing down it's going to be just about a seventh place oh my god that was a brilliant race i think he let me through there at the end because he hit me earlier in the race but he didn't need to do that 
But my goodness, what a battle. What a brilliant circuit. Great to have it back. And yes, finished one position higher than I started. Yes, he let me through at the end, but I will take that. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.